Hi guys. I'm so sorry, but my hair, you know, I don't know if anybody who's tuning into this right now saw that video where we learned how to use our centering grounding chakra exercise, but something that I've just done. So good. Now we're good. Ah, oh, you know, I wanted so much to do this live stream. Whatever is done. This is what I'm going to be talking about today. Okay, so do you know of how you ever, you ever know somebody that you've known for a long time, but usually, you know, you, you don't get along that well. It's like, you know each other because you're related or whatever. You go to work and you don't really talk and you're dreaming. There's one dream in particular. This is really, really cool. I'm going to tell you about something that happened about, I don't know, 30 years ago. I looked up to my aunt so much, my auntie Peggy. And um, she told me about this amazing dream she had. She said she just had a really hard day at work. And you no, know, it was a hard day in, in, in life in general. She had some different things going on. It was not good. <laughs> kind of like the beginning of this video. It was not good. Um, <laughs> so she fell asleep and she woke up and she realized that it was time to go to the airport that she was late. And her alarm was going crazy. Uh, the kids were already there. They had been driven there by their aunt. So she gets to the airport and she realizes that she doesn't have any bags. And there's streams of people going down what looks like a short set of stairs. And as all those people go down those short set of stairs, it converges together. And there are these doorways that look almost like rings. And she's assuming that they act as like, uh, you know, metal detectors or whatever. But as each person walks through the metal detector, they end up somewhere else because they're not metal detectors. It's some sort of traveling device. And as she walks down these set of stairs, she meets my mom. And she says to my mom, Jock Lee, how are you here? And my mom says, well, actually, I was wondering how you're here. You're never here. I come here all the time. So my Auntie Peggy goes, like, I, well, I had somewhere to go, but I don't know where I need to be. And so my mom, Jock Lee, said, maybe it's right here. Maybe both of us need to be here. And my aunt said, do you think this is going to happen one day? And my mom said, absolutely. And, and my aunt said, do you think we're ever going to live to see it? And my mom went, mm, probably not. <laughs> so she goes through the gate and she blinks. And it's all black for a second. And she can't feel anything except wind going through her fingers, her, her hands are on her sides and she feels the wind streaming through her fingers and her head feels like it's rushing even though she's standing still. And she opens her eyes and she's in her bedroom and she's looking at her ceiling. The first time I heard this story was actually from my mom when I was maybe four. The second time I heard that story was from my aunt months later the third time i heard that story was the first time that either one of them realized that they had had the same dream they had met in the same place they had the same experience it was a shared experience that is dream walking it's something that we all do it's not a strange thing it's not a silly thing it's not a weird thing it's just the truth we all dream walk at some point at some point when you fall asleep, you're going to wake up somewhere else and you're going to walk into someone that you know. And I dare you now to bring it up, to mention it somehow, just, just a little bit, to that person you know after you wake up. Just ask them if they dreamt the night before, if they remember. I bet you anything. I bet you. And I, I more than betting, I know they're going to be so freaking freaked out when you say that because it's real because they had the same experience it was an experience and it was shared 
It's going to happen. If it hasn't already happened to you, it's going to happen to you. I've had many of these experiences and a lot of us have. And believe it or not, dream walking is one way of saying astral traveling or flying without a broomstick. And that's why I have this book here. And thank you, whoever it is who's here. Hi. <laughs> so listen, flying without a broomstick sounds like it must be some super Wiccan, super pagan kind of a book, but it's actually not. She has these amazing, amazing meditations in here, but they're not just meditations, they're scripts. So here's what the difference between a meditation and a scripted meditation. Meditation is someone says, close your eyes. After you open your eyes, focus on the flame. Do not remove your eyes from the flame. Any feelings that you have that come bubbling up to the surface, let them go until the timer goes off and go back to what you're doing. That's a meditation. It's, it's an exercise. You know what you're doing. You know the reason for doing it. You do it. You move on. But a scripted meditation is something totally different. It's where someone tells you, this is the point of this meditation, which one of them is in here. It's to go to a specific meeting place, an actual meeting place, a physical meeting place that exists to meet with a group of people. And she tells you how to do that. And I know it sounds crazy, but listen, I am a huge, uh, I'm obsessed with Japan. I love Japan, right? You can see it if you see the banner of my, my page, I'm obsessed with Japan. So I went to Japan using this and I talked to people who were really there and I don't understand how that works and I don't care because it was freaking awesome. And um, I went to Nagano. I love ice skating. I'm obsessed with the ISU, which you might not know what that is, but basically anyone who's in to Japanese ice skating. Wah, wah. And uh, <laughs> I went there and I went to the, there's this one really famous ice skating rink there where um, uh, when they have the championship, they open it to the public. People go there and I mean, anyone, it's, it's open admission. Anyone goes there, including the ice skaters who need to practice, which is, you know, it makes it difficult for them because they have to share the rink with all these people. I went there and I went ice skating and I talked to people. And um, yeah, the next, the next morning, I remember my uncle was talking to my dad and he had been, um, because he's, he's not that into ice skating, but you know, it was back when it was really popular. He said it was really funny because on the screen for a minute, I thought that I saw Raquel. And the footage was from the night before. And I was like, I just thought it was so cool. I didn't say anything. I was stunned uh, because he probably did. I, you know, it's, it's mind blowing. It's so, 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 so cool. Think of it like this. Is there someone that you miss? Someone that you haven't been able to connect with in a really long time if you use this book flying without a broomstick you can and i don't understand how it works i don't need to understand how it works because all i need to understand is that it works if you use this book flying without a broomstick it is written by dj conway astral projection in the astral world i swear to god i swear to jujubes i swear to whatever you want me to swear to you will be able to reconnect with that person that you miss or that you want to meet. I've done it with multiple people and I've done it in order to go to specific places. I went to Nagano and, you know, there are things that I wrote in my journal. I, I keep a journal specifically for that, um, for different moments of, I don't know, clairvoyant coolness, whatever. And I wrote down some very, very specific details. I went to one stall to try and eat some stall food. Then I realized that I didn't understand the ingredient list because my Japanese wasn't that good yet. And I decided to leave, but they looked really, really cool. There are these little fried round puff balls that were on these little sticks, almost like uh, toothpicks. And they were, so they were battered and a little ball and stick. And it looked like they were covered in different sauces and then they could put little nuts or something on top and I didn't understand what it was so I decided to just move on but I talked to the people that were at the stall um I think they said something about my hair and <laughs> um I tried to memorize the street layout 
like they do in Japan. In Japan, most of the time, there there aren't uh, zip codes. Um, it's something that they're starting to utilize, but not quite to the degree that we do. And so anyways, what most people do in Japan is they actually write, they draw the, the sort of diagram on the street for you if you're asking for directions and they're nice enough to help you. That's what they'll have to do. So they'll have to draw like a little cross and here's the old barn and blah, 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 blah. And um, so I tried to memorize it so I could do that for some other people. And then I, I did. I ended up giving them directions. And the next morning, I drew down those directions exactly as I remembered them. And the next day, when my uncle called my dad and said it was really weird because he felt like he had seen me in the feed. He could see the back of my head. Um, it was at that exact cross street that I had drawn the day, that morning. And the night before when I was dream walking. So think what you will, but remember this. You know, sometimes people don't do things because they're afraid of looking foolish or gullible. But I think that to look the fool is way better than to look the person who's too scared to even try. Before you knock it, try it. Try this book. It is incredible. It is one of my favorite books. This was my mom's book, and I'm very, very grateful to her leaving it for me. And um, yeah, check it out. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.